Hi, I'm Ashton Droning On. Our last few reviews have been about brushless micro quadcopters. One of the first that we reviewed was the King Kong Q90. It flew really well, but it didn't have much in terms of specification and didn't even include a receiver. Therefore, it was a little bit overpriced. King Kong have just, however, released the new model, which is the 90 GT. With a really impressive specification and features that you'd normally expect to see only on a full-size racing quadcopter, this one is sure to impress. Gearbest have very kindly sent us one for review and we're going to take a look at it now. Flight test will be in part two. Links to all the products featured are in the video description. Give this video a thumbs up, comment below with your thoughts and please keep subscribing. Enjoy the review. Kindly sent to us from Gearbest, this is the King Kong 90 GT Brushless Micro. Let's have a look inside. Packaged really nicely from Gearbest, um, shipped via DHL. This is what's inside, and wow, have King Kong come a long way. You might remember the packaging of the Q90 was just a boring brown cardboard box. Now we have a plastic presentation box which looks really, really neat. Now we've ordered the FR Sky version here, so we're going to get an inbuilt receiver. But there it is! What a difference. Now, I'm not really sure how they can call it the evolution of the Q90, because this really is a completely different model. To put the two side by side, you can see how radical the differences are. So no longer do we have this very tall, high stacked flight controller and uh, speed controller array. We've got a neat four in one board on this. We don't have individual speed controllers on the arms. We've got a completely different type of frame here, which feels really solid compared to the rather flimsy frame of the Q90. And overall, this is just a lighter quadcopter. So although it's an evolution in the model, it's a completely different beast. Quick look at what else is in the box here. So we've got the usual test report in here as well, just to say that this model has been tested and that everything works. We've got some nice graphics here as well on this accessory box. And inside there we have, oh, now that's a nice feature. Prop guards come with this quadcopter. So that does make this quad potentially quite nice to fly indoors because many of these brushless quads are just too powerful to fly indoors and you end up breaking the props in a matter of seconds. Got some screws there to attach them as well. So that's really nice. Also in the box, we have a USB cable for programming the flight controller. And we've also got some other accessories here which look related to the flight controller. Possibly a cable there for hooking up other parts such as an LED strip. We've then got a nice full color instruction manual here. Uh, this just looks such nice quality, really, really good. And then finally, in this other accessory box, I'm expecting we have the battery and some other components. And yep, yeah, so there we go. We've got a set of props. Uh, looks like we have spares in there as well. We've got the battery, which is a 1S 350 milliamps, a tiny, tiny battery. But as we know from the Q90, it's capable of carrying a much heavier battery pack. So we'll try that during the test flight. We then have a prop removal tool and two of those big, thick elastic bands, which we can use to hold the battery in place. So this quad really does come with a nice array of accessories, really good, especially to see that the prop guards are included. All of that fits nicely into the plastic box and it's lovely that they ship this plastic box because generally with these micro quads, you don't ever have a nice way to transport them to avoid them being damaged. So this will make a nice box to keep it in when taking it to the field. Now a look at the GT90 itself. So as mentioned, this really is quite a drastic evolution from the previous model. We've got such a strong frame here. That looks like two mil carbon fiber as well. So you're really gonna struggle to snap this frame. The motors are the same. We've got the 1103 7800KV motors. They are King Kong's own brand brushless. On the front, we've got the camera here. Now that looks like the same FOV lens as the original 90. Uh, quadcopter as well and we've got the VTX mounted on top of the quadcopter. It's just a shame that that's stuck there actually. Without it there it would be such a low profile quad but maybe that will be on the next model. 
What's really nice to see as well on the 90 GT is the dipole antenna. These are far more durable on these micro brushless quadcopters. And when you have a bump, the circular antennas generally tend to get squashed as with the Aurora 100 here. So that's really nice that the 90 GT hopefully has a little bit more lifetime. As noted before, no longer do we have those ridiculous speed controllers stuck to the undersides of the arms. Instead, we have a four-in-one speed controller and flight controller board tucked neatly in there. So that's really nice. We don't have to worry anymore about breaking those speed controllers on each landing. Same as the Q90, we've got the balance port style connector being used for attaching the battery. Now I actually changed that connector from a balance port on my Q90 to an EC2 connector. I personally prefer those and I have this type of connector on all of my 2S batteries, but that's of course your choice. We've got a USB port on the side for programming the flight controller, which is an F3 and it's running beta flight, which is really good. And then below the flight controller, you can see the speed controller four in one board. And that actually supports multi-shot, one shot, D shot, and it's running BL Heli. So that's really nice. So I ordered the FR Sky version of the 90GT, which means it comes with this tiny little micro receiver here. This is actually called the AC800. And I have to confess that I'm not a massive fan of this receiver. It's a very, very much budget receiver. Its range is minimal, probably around 100 meters. And from flying the King Kong Q90 with this, I found it to glitch quite a bit as well when you're not even really near the, the end of the range capabilities of this receiver. So I might be tempted actually to swap this out for an FR Sky full range micro receiver instead. But for the purposes of testing, it will be fine. It comes with a double-sided sticky pad underneath, so I would remove the elastic bands here and then stick it securely underneath into place. It's running SBUS as well, so the wire loom here should work with most other micro receivers. So in terms of weight, the old Q90, now I do have props attached here, but that weighed 57 grams. The new 90GT weighs in at only 44, so quite a substantial difference. I cannot wait to see how this thing flies. You'll remember the very easily breakable props of the Q90. Well, the Q90 GT has revised props. They are the same size, but they have a much bigger blade surface area, which is gonna give more power. And they are also no longer just push on, they actually secure with two small screws as well. So no more props flying off when you're flying the 90 GT. So we've been through the binding process with this micro AC800 receiver before, and if you want to refer back to that, you can look at the King Kong Q90 review that we did earlier, but we'll very quickly go through it again. So first of all, I've created a new model entry in my Tyrannus X90 Plus called the King Kong 90 GT. We're now gonna press the menu button to take us to the model memory, and then press page once. Go to the bottom of that page, or you can press up once, and that'll take you there. And we need to go to where it says, here we go, internal RF and the mode. Now this is a D8 receiver, the AC800, so change that to D8, and then enter that. Okay, we're now ready to bind, so the next thing to do is to apply power to the quadcopter. Once you've done that, wait about five seconds and the light will start flashing rapidly on the AC800. You now need to press the bind button on your Tyrannus, like that. And the light will now go solid on the AC800 receiver to show that you have successfully bound it to your Tyrannus. You can now press exit, turn everything off and back on again and you're done. What is really nice to see here as well is that despite the AC800 being a very budget receiver, it is sending us telemetry information. And if we go to page 12 of the model settings, click discover new sensors, you'll see a number of readings coming back. So that's a really, really nice feature. Okay, so it's now time to look at the flight controller configuration. Now the 90GT ships with Betaflight already installed, so I'm gonna plug it into the USB port first and then I'm going to click connect. And there we go. So it's, I've got it on a flat surface and the accelerometer is already looking nice and level. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. 
Looking at the configuration tab, we've got multi-shot enabler standard. Um, it does actually support 125, one shot and one shot 42. Multi-shot's quicker though, it allows higher CPU speed, so we're gonna leave that enabled. Motor stop is one setting we are going to change because we want to control the minimum spinning of the props in the basic angle and horizon modes. When I arm the quad initially, I don't want the motors to spin uh, based on this setting, so I want to control it instead via air mode. So enable motor stop, that means we've got more control of the quad. We've got battery monitoring enabled, which is good. And on the left-hand side, you can see that the receiver, the AC800 is connected via SBUS, as I mentioned earlier. Current metering is disabled. We're gonna enable that and set it to virtual. Um, and you can see we've got a current reading there now, which is really good. The gyro and PID frequency is running at four kilohertz for both. We may be able to up that to eight, but I'm gonna leave everything stock for now. You can see we've got the accelerometer enabled, of course, and everything else there looks fine. I've set the craft name to King Kong 90 GT. So we'll click save and reboot. Looking at the failsafe tab, we've got stage two enabled and it's set to drop from the factory, which is brilliant. That's the safest setting you can possibly have for failsafe. And we'll test that before we take the test flight as well to make sure it does actually work. Looking at the PID tuning tab, now the P's are very, very low, except for your 22 for roll and pitch. Again, I'm gonna leave everything as it is, but we may want to up those depending on how this quadcopter flies, but they are fairly low actually. I'm going to leave the RC rate, super rate and expo settings as they are as well, just so I can give you guys a good idea of how this flies from the factory. Looking at the receiver tab now, wiggling the sticks on my Tyranus, nothing's going to happen here until I plug in the battery to give the receiver some power. So I'm going to do that right now. Now, just a recommendation, remove the props from the quad before you do anything in beta flight, just to ensure that you don't accidentally fire up those motors. So now that my Transmitter is on and I've got power to receiver. I can see that everything is working nicely there. Very nice. Now the only thing I do need to do actually is configure my auxiliary channels so that I can enable some additional features. So what I'm gonna do, and you can't see this, but I'm gonna to go to my Tyranis mixer page, which is under the model settings. I'm going to enable channel five and I'm gonna set that to my arm switch. And you can see that we now have auxiliary one working there perfectly. And now I'm gonna set up auxiliary two, which is gonna be my mode switch. There you go, you can now see that moving the auxiliary two channel. That's gonna be where I can set my modes. Now I don't believe that this model has a beeper, but I'm gonna configure channel seven anyway. There we go, so I've got aux three and we can use that later. If not for beeper, then for something else. So with all of that configured, uh, and also you can see the channel map is already the Tyranis channel map because I chose the FR Sky receiver bundle. I'm gonna go to the modes tab. So you can see we've got the arm mode configured there. And if I just toggle my switch, that is working perfectly. I'm gonna add air mode onto aux two and I'm gonna set that to cover the span of two modes so that I've got horizon and rate mode using air mode, but I'm not gonna need air mode on angle mode, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. So looking at the other aux two settings here, I've got those already configured nicely for angle and horizon. And besides that, there is a beeper setting here. Let's set that on auxiliary three and just see if there is a beeper. Okay, so testing that, there is no beeper on this model. That's a massive shame. It might be that the flight controller has ports to solder a beeper to it, but it's just the one big feature that's missing from what could be the perfect micro quadcopter. Now on the motors tab, one thing I would recommend doing is a calibration. Now the way we do that is to unplug the battery first on the quadcopter. That's very important to do. Now, Toggle the checkbox there and set the motor power on the master toggle to full. Okay, now nothing's gonna happen on the motors because there's no battery attached. But with that now at full, connect the battery to the quad. The speed controllers will make quite a series of tones if you just heard in the background. When they do that, slide the master back down to zero.
There you go, we get a lovely series of tunes again, and the speed controller is then reset, but that's just to basically synchronize and calibrate the speed controllers so that they're all aware of the minimum and maximum settings from the flight controller. Always worth doing with a new quadcopter, but bear in mind it only applies to brushless quads. CLI, final thing we're just going to do is check the version of Betaflight. It's running 3.0.1, which is a little bit out of date now, actually, October last year. Might be worth us updating that at some point to the latest 3.1.7, uh, which at the moment seems to be a really good release with lots of new features. But for now, we're going to leave everything as stock and get on to the flight test. So overall, the King Kong 90 GT is just a much more refined package when compared to the King Kong Q90. It ships with all the right accessories, including even prop guards. The frame looks almost indestructible. It weighs less. It's presented beautifully. The props will no longer fly off. It has a four-in-one speed controller board instead of the individual speed controllers on the underside of the arms. This has great potential and I'm looking forward to flying it. So that's the new King Kong 90 GT unboxed, bound to our transmitter and ready for flight. Be sure to click that subscribe button below because part two, the flight test, will be available in a few days. In the meantime, links to the products are in the video description. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and comment below of your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching.